in the studio. How much it cost? I got five hundred dollars right now. <laughs> Yo, we need to have that. Ain't no has to ever Marcus J live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. Uh, I purposely brought the mics up a little bit sooner than normal, and I was praying. I said, "Lord," and I don't pray a lot. And he said, "A lot, a lot, or at all." Lord, did I said, "Man, please don't let this man say something that's gonna embarrass." So bad, you take the M off that mic. <laughs> <laughs> embarrass. <laughs> yeah. Embarrass all of us and whatnot. But uh, that's what's up, man. I appreciate it. I love this brother. Ain't no ass that Marcus J. Live from Dead Legacy in that radio. Give us a call. 804-402-2893 is number that'll be down with us tonight. We thanking those folks that are listening Somebody to us and say hi to on me. tune in and stream me, uh, and listening please. to the replays on YouTube and iTunes and we appreciate those folks that are listening oh, to the previous segments. Our last segment before we close it out with our rants and close it out with our closings. Joe, yep. I want you in on this next segment. Okay. First, uh, we are talking about Adam LaRoche. <laughs> LaRoche. Adam LaRoche, LaRoche is the baseball play, plays LaRoche. for the Chicago White Sox. Played. He's played for uh, other teams throughout his career, Washington Nationals uh, most recently before the White Sox that I can remember and I can think of. But the thing with Adam LaRoche, let's kind of bring this out and kind of talk about it. He is the person who uh, was asked to not bring his 14-year-old son around the team as much as he had in the past. Yep. Uh, There are unconfirmed reports that there were some teammates that had issues with it that has not been confirmed as the reason but the team's general manager went to Adam LaRoche and said, you know, you know, your kid is a dope kid, but we, won't, we want you to not bring him around quite as much as you had been in the past. And Adam LaRoche was so outraged and offended by that that he abruptly retired last Tuesday and he decided that his $13 million contract was no longer something that was important enough for him to keep. He retired. And so I've got some pretty strong opinions about this. I'm going to give everybody around the room an opportunity to kind of, you know, pontificate about this. Yeah, I'm dope and I Mm. uh, speak on a college level. But uh, I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to pontificate about that. But before we do that in the room, before we do that, we're going to get our caller back on the live line. Caller, is this who I think it is? (laughs) Of course it is. It's your twin. Yeah, that's my twin, DJ Renee Melendez. What's up, DJ? Tell us DJ. what your thoughts are well, about Adam LaRoche before we go around the room with this one. What you think? I think I think he's an absolute fool, and I say that because no one has the privilege to take their kid to work every single day. You take them one day out of the year, or if there's an extenuating circumstance, you take them or whatever. Um, you know, but taking them every day it creates a very uncomfortable atmosphere for your coworkers because if you're using uh, a specific language, you know, they're, they're ball players, so they, they curse and they talk on the flip or whatever, and they walk around the locker room, you know, half naked and stuff sometimes. That creates an uncomfortable environment for them, you know, having to watch what they say or watch how they're dressed or anything like that because their child is there. Now, the flip side to that is, of course, now that this has become a big media story, of course, they're coming out and they're saying, oh, you know, we don't have a problem with it and this, that, and the other. But I'm sure that that wasn't the case a month ago, you know, when spring training first started. They don't want to say anything so that they look horrible in the media, you know, and it, it might mess up any endorsements or any relationships that they may have outside of their baseball career or whatever. But... It, it really isn't um, – it's not appropriate. It, it's not fair. I get, I get the whole thing. He wants to be dad of the year. And, you know, we all want to be parent of the year. But there are some times you have to let your your kids know, you know, listen, that's not acceptable. You know, I, I'm not allowed to do that. This is my career. This is my job. I'm not allowed to do that. You know, if you want to come, you want to sit in the stands one day out of the month or whatever – that's 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 all right, but a locker and and every day and being homeschooled up in the stands and it's re, it's beyond ridiculous. And now he put the White Sox in a, I mean he wasn't that great of a player to begin with, but now he put the White Sox in a position where you know hopefully they'll still have go on to have a successful season. 
All right, now, Renee, Joe wants to uh, address you, so I'm going to give an, uh, an opportunity to address what you're saying before we let you go. Joe, what's your thoughts? Because you, you, you're giving me the face as she's speaking. Yeah, I got to give you the face on it. Hey, Big Sis, you know what? I can agree with your – well, I take that back. I, I disagree with your opinion, but this is the reason why. First of all, as a father to a son, I, I, I applaud this cat for sitting there saying, you know what? It's about the fact that this is what I want. First of all, you can pay $13 million to play a game. This is a game. This is something that you do on a schoolyard. This is not really a profession to me. I mean, a profession is what I do. I work hard at this. That's not, this, this is a game that he's playing. So for, and it, I, it's a lot of different facets for this for me. When I saw who they put in the forefront, who's the general manager, which happens to be a black guy, yeah, it made... To me, it was a little pissy because it made him look like he had to do something that he really didn't want to do. And it was his teammates and alleged well, let me let me back up. Allegedly it was his teammates who sit there and made an issue about the fact that he had his son with him. Guess what? It's baseball. That's the way baseball has always been portrayed, as far as I can remember, that you want your son with you. You wanna be out there, you wanna see him, you wanna you want him to know how much, you know, baseball is fun and how you are a part of the team, you're a part of the league. So what that he has his son with him? It's a game i get the fact that you know it's a locker room yo i mean anybody who's played sports has been in a locker room we understand that there's some language that goes on in the locker room but guess what folks you're going to hear that every day that you're out in the street so if you think you're going to shield your children from what's going on in the streets you're wrong i i can't get with that i applaud him for saying you know what piss on y'all because guess what somebody and you said he wasn't a good ball player yeah, well, he was worth $13 million. Whether you think you're a good ball player or not, I can't go out there and get $13 million to try to hit a ball. So you go gonna... to work tomorrow and you tell your boss that you want to open up a space in your cubicle or in your office. You want a divider so you can put your kid in your divider and you see how well that goes over. Yo, but see what? Because doing let's, it, one, let's doing be it real. one day out of the year let's to be take real. your child to work day is one thing. First of all, but doing it I don't want to take my child to work. That's ridiculous. I don't want to. I don't want to take my kid to work because my job is not fun. Baseball is all about fun. It's a game. It's a freaking but game. Work, my work whole work thing that, that no, everybody not, wants no. to. As the mother of three sons, yeah. okay, and I have a son who plays baseball, okay, yeah. year round. It's a okay? game. It's not. It's not just a game when you are working at it every day. Because beyond the game and beyond the season, there's training, there's weight training, there's exercise, there's commitment. So it's a year round thing. It's a game. To be good, you think Derek Jeter played twenty years because it was just a game? No, Derek Jeter played 20 years because he was getting endorsements to do what he wanted to do. If anybody would have – you know what? My thing about that is when nobody – if Derek Jeter would have had 14 kids and would have had one in his locker room with his name on the joint, wouldn't nobody have said a darn thing. It's a game. Everybody it's not, it's wants not, to be upset about a, the but, fact – Okay, so it might be a game, okay? I'm going to use what you're saying. It's a game, okay? So for him, for Adam LaRoche, it's a game. But for them other guys in the locker room – it may just be that, you know what, this is the way I need to feed my family, so I need to do what I need to do. And I don't need somebody else's kid, somebody else's distraction coming in here interrupting my zone and my zen. All right, Renee, what's the, do you happen to know what the league minimum is for baseball? It's somewhere in the neighborhood of three and a half to 500000 Okay. The average Joe doesn't make three and a half. To five hundred thousand dollars to play a darn game, and I get you. I, I understand your point of view. I just feel that he took a stand, he made a point, and he and I guarantee you. Now, quote me when I say this: he will get another team who's going to sit there and pick him up, and he's going to have his son in the locker room. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to feed off the endorsements that they're going to get for being that good good feeling group that picks up Adam LaRoche and his son and guess what that team is going to thrive and the White Sox going to look like a bunch of dumbasses for saying oh well you can't have him in there and like you said now they're backtracking why do you think they're backtracking though come on Renee work with me on that one I mean do you not think it's politics 
I think that there's some level of politics involved in it, but I also say I'm not even talking about the management aspect. If you, you know, had an opportunity to talk to the players candidly, okay, individually, and ask them how they specifically felt about that kid being there every day, you really think you're going to get positive feedback? Well, you know what? Then they should have been men enough to sit there and say it to Adam LaRoche. How many of them cats? How do you know that they did it, though? Well, because, you you know, what they was. You don't know that they did or they didn't. TMZ, I'm going to say it like this. TMZ can come out and they can find everything else out. I swear for goodness. Nobody else was sit there and was man enough to sit there and say that we told we told management that they needed to sit there and say something to him. Why? Because they but would be looked know. at Nobody like a bunch knows of punks. Whether they said something to him, okay. you know, in the locker room or pulled him to the side and like, "Yo, man, you know, listen, the dudes in the locker room is talking about your kid being there every day, you know, blah blah blah." And I honestly think, and this is where me and Marcus were talking, right. there's a certain level of entitlement. Because wouldn't no black player be able to bring their kid up in there every day oh, like that? I mean, no. And you can okay, say what so you want to say. We gonna, but, but we just made the point that do you believe if Jerry Jeter with the Yankees would have did that, somebody would have said something to him? I don't think that the Yankees, first of all, Joy. No, nah, just, I mean, seriously, just answer that organization, question. Do that you believe, would yes not or have no, do you believe, yes or no, that the Steinbrenners would have gave a flip floor and filth about him bringing his son to work. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and jump in here, Renee. I think we're on the same page, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm only cutting it short because we're running out of time for the show. Um, but I'm going to say this. Um, I think that it's an unfair uh, analogy to compare Derek Jeter to Adam LaRoche because one thing about sports is the more you produce, the more leeway you get. And so it's not a black or white thing. Sports has shown on more than one occasion that it don't matter what color you are. If you're someone that produces, you get privileges that people who don't produce don't get. And so if you're a white Kevin Love who plays for the Cleveland Cavaliers and you happen to be real dope versus black LeBron James who's on the Cleveland Cavaliers who happens to not be real dope, then guess who's going to get the privilege? Now, I flipped it to make the point that it doesn't matter what color you are in sports sports to me is the one of the few places in this country where it don't matter what color you are now if we're speaking specifically of adam laroche he batted 227 last year you know i'm not a baseball person so well that's 22 percent. he had success that ain't good that ain't good but he was still worth 13 mil well he already signed a contract and so even if but you, that was over several years it was but over several years that was years. the remaining it, it balance was the remain, it, was the, it does matter renee okay, go ahead well, I don't know Re- renee go ahead and tell us who you are and where you where you come from i'm gonna go ahead and, and, and close this well you here. renee <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> dj <laughs> renee melendez on deep house sessions on saturday nights from 7 to 9 p.m only on LegacyInternetRadio.com. Hey, Renee, I need to put you and Joe on the show together, yo, for real. Because y'all two are gold. Y'all are radio gold, let me tell you. Thank you for being a part of our family, sister. I'll talk to you soon, all right? All right, later. Hey, you fella. got it, peace. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Now, I mean, just really honestly getting back to the the point that we're talking about on that. With sports, it, it, it really is a matter of what is what have you done for me lately? But Marcus J, I, I get that, but but the reason that I made that point was you say it's not about okay, f- fine. LeBron James, he I bet I guarantee you he bring his kids to practice and do what he because he's do. LeBron James. Exactly, he black though, right? It doesn't matter the color. I just okay, said so that. We say, but it's all about if you're producing or not producing. In in sports, in sports, sports is the one of the few places in America where race don't matter. Okay, well, my quarterback ain't produced in several years. His baby come to come to. But he's a franchise he's quarterback for the oh, Dallas Cowboys. You, but you're gonna sit there and say that. But you just said he's a franchise quarterback for the but Dallas he's not Cowboys. Producing, but he, is he but producing? But he's a franchise quarterback is for he the Dallas. Producing. Da- you know, if you if you want to tie me to that one statement and not yep. allow me to speak on it, okay, then that's go ahead. fine. Go ahead, speak on but it. if we're talking about, I'm just using what it, you said. Okay, that's what I said. Okay, right, fine. Well, go ahead. But if we're talking about the franchise quarterback for. Right. A team that is a legacy team in the country. We're talking about the Yankees. We're talking about the Cowboys. We're talking about the Lakers. There's certain teams that supersede every other team. If we're talking about the Memphis Grizzlies point guard, or we're Who? talking about the, you know, the, the Tennessee Titans quarterback, no matter how good the Tennessee Titans quarterback is, he may not get 
the leeway that lousy ass Tony Romo gets for the punk ass Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> so if you want to draw that out of me, yeah, then that's what you was yeah. looking for. Yeah, that's, then that's what, what you okay. Well, that's what you're gonna get. Okay. But the truth is, Adam LaRoche, in all seriousness, he batted 227 last year. For those folks who don't know about baseball, that's not very good. He didn't produce that much last year, but he had a contract that extended beyond last year. A contract that's guaranteed. It's not like football. So football. Your contracts aren't guaranteed right. in baseball and basketball. But let me ask you a question. Are. So that means he was producing because, yo, DJ uh, years Renee ago, there and said that he, years he ago was a when sucker he's, and he won't no he, good. Years ago when he signed the contract. See, again, it's not like football. Football, you can sign a contract today and next year we decide we don't like you. We can cut you and not have to pay you. I'll give you a perfect example. C.C. Sabathia, Karth- Karsten Charles Sabathia plays for the New York Yankees. When he signed his seven-year contract five years ago, he was one of the best pitchers in baseball. Now, in the fifth year of that con- – in the sixth year of that contract, us Yankees fans wishes his ass Which would just go – Which one was that? Was that the big dude or the, the big, tall the, – the, the big C.C. Yeah, we wish right. he would just go somewhere and disappear and retire. Why? Because he's not worth the $25 million that he's going to make this year. He wasn't worth it then. But see, we, we, you're jumping around stuff. No, no, no. What I'm talking you, about is semantics for me. It, it, but, but, but see, like I told you, you know I don't understand – I don't know baseball. I'm a sports person. I don't know baseball. And that's the reason why I told you the guaranteed contract – is the difference because I know you're a football mind, yeah. and the football mind is, ah, you ain't producing. Yes, it's going tomorrow. See ya. It's not like that in baseball. You sign a guaranteed contract, so it doesn't matter what you do. The the the, the thirty seconds after you sign, you good. You're getting that money no matter what you do. Then he's smart. It, well, he ain't so smart because he quit over a principle of a kid. And I, I look my daughter square in the eye and said, I'm not giving up $13 million for you. Your ass, go to school. But Why? watch this. And, 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 let, me, let me just say this because I didn't make this point. And I'm mm-hmm. agree with Renee in the sense that you can't take your kid to school tomorrow, to, to work tomorrow. Right. She can't take her kid to work tomorrow. She can't take her kid to work tomorrow. Definitely he can't can. take his kid to work tomorrow. He's taking the stand and it's nonsense if you apply it to intelligent thought like okay you were allowed to do it but you know what you can't do it no more and there's nowhere in your contract that says that your kid deserves to be here okay so he quit i mean but i'm all right but I, and he i quit i will agree with you he on quit that. he quit and he gave quit. away 13 million dollars but you know what for me he said 13 million dollars wasn't worth and as a father if that's how he felt you can't discount how this man felt if it's not worth thirteen mil. It's not about the money for me. No, I can. I got you. It's like piss on you and the money. It's it's about the fact that I felt the connection with my son there, and that's what I needed. And if you can understand that, I'm not saying that. It, first of all, let's be realistic. Okay, Big Bro Joe, I'm not giving up thirteen million dollars neither. Hey, to me, that's the whole point. Jay, that's the whole point. I'm like, though. hey, big dog, that's the, that's sit the whole, on the sideline. But that's the whole point. I, I'll see you uh, when I come home and I'll I got this money. I'll see you in money. October. There it is. You can watch me on TV. I'll get you here one week in a month. That's what I'm going to do. Yes. I'm not saying that he was – I, I still don't believe that he made a punk move by saying he piss on the money. If that's what he felt as a father and he was strong enough in his convictions to tell y'all piss on y'all and you allow me to do it now, but now you got some feelings because you got some blowback for some some blowhard mother scudders who ain't doing their job. Shout out to Big Jeff. Yep, yep. You ain't doing your job and you telling me, but guess what? You ain't made the money that I'm making. If I'm making 13 mil and I only had to work 30 seconds and you still ain't getting my money, guess what? Somebody, now tell me, yo, Mr. 3375, help I got it right. Hey, Nick, tell me. Yo, big sis, tell me. Do you think that anybody else is going to pay this cat to come and play ball and not give a dang about him having his son there? He's not making $13 million from nowhere ever again. How many people going to make $13 million? Anyhow, I mean, I, make I, 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 got, I got you on that. But I think the piece that we uh, – I, I guess where I get a little bit outraged is the – the uh, just how you can honestly think that it's okay to take your kid to work. What I'm trying to understand is outside of the father-son bond, 
that he was getting outside of that? What was this kid learning by being there with his dad? My, my first, my question was, why his ass ain't in school? Right. He was homeschooled. Okay, but that's what, that is not a part of the homeschool curriculum. How you know? The teacher went to the doctor. It was his how you mom. know? You ain't in White Sox. You ain't, you ain't in the White Sox organization. You don't know what homeschooling is. Get out of here. Wow. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't know that. Kabu. Wow. Whatever, man. Girl, bad. You know what the privilege? <laughs> the, the the privilege that would come with anybody who Say first it again. first Say first, that word first again? privilege. Say it again. It's privilege. Privilege. It's privilege, and obviously he has a right to do whatever it is he wants to do. And and, and let work. me let me let me be clear on me understanding that it is absolutely his right to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's also my right to have an opinion about it. Right. Agree. And, and, and the fact that any person that would forego their job in a contract that they sign over something as small as I can't take my kid to work, to me, that's outrageous. Well, and it's different. It, it, and I was looking at it originally like take my kid to work, meaning, okay, he'll be here with me for an hour or two while we're in transit. Transit meaning, and everybody's been in the situation. I got to go to work. I need to be at work about 8 o'clock, but my husband don't have to be to work till 10, but I got to take the baby first, and then he's got to meet me. You know, y'all you, see where I'm going with that? Mm -hmm. nope, no, 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 no. ordinary people. Okay. No. Him this kid ordinary. was with him during camp. Apparently he is. Him ain't ordinary, though. <laughs> On his job Apparently at the baseball is. field, in the locker room, once again, this is not a class field trip. Homeschool, regular school, whatever you want to call it. I want to know what his wife said about it. You damn I don't fool. understand why he thought it was okay in his mind to have his young son exposed to these older men. Now that I totally agree with. It's you privilege on. because privilege. it's privilege because apparently he was pri privileged when he grew up because his dad he was wanted, a ball his, player. His, his, his dad was a ball player, so he had that same experience. It's privilege. It's also privilege to be able to say, you know what, I don't care about the money, you know, I'm going to take this stand. Mm -hmm. To me, that's part of the discussion because Joe can't do that. Right. Hell no. Jay can't do that. Right. I can't go to work tomorrow and say, but you can't, I friend. can't take my daughter to work with me. You know what, I'm mad, I quit. I'm not able to do that. <laughs> There's a privilege Everybody that knows. comes with being able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the piece that we're missing because it's inappropriate for anybody to think that it's okay to take their child to work with them. That's outrageous to me. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's really honestly defending that, you know, oh, yeah. especially when they got this hashtag, family values. <laughs> that's the thing that they're hashtag, family first, I think. Family, family first. first. They're hashtagging. That's the Yankees? I mean, um, I'm sorry. They're the hashtagging Sox? people that are supporting him okay. are hashtagging family first. It's insulting to someone like me, and it should be insulting to someone like you because we love our children. Adam LaRoche don't love his kid no more than we do. But we don't have the privilege of being able to quit our job because we can't take our kids to work. But you keep hitting the nail on the head. Privilege. Privilege. Pri and, we, and guess what? You Privilege. know what? I guess we're on the same page. It's funny how we always snake back around to the same to the same thing. You guys are saying the same thing. We're saying the same thing. Just we're just looking way. at it from different angles, mm -hmm. but we're coming back to the same thing. Yeah. I mean, privilege. Yo, Mr. 3375, would you get fired if you took your kid to work with you? I would. You would? Where, where I work at. Big Sis, would you get fired if you took your oh, kid no, to work? No. Nope. No? Mm -mm. I don't think you, I'd get fired. You Tommy, though. You ain't got no job. Um, <laughs> that was so wild. No, I don't think I'd get fired. I don't think I'd get fired. Yeah, you would. Nate, would you, would you get fired? No, I wouldn't get fired. I wouldn't get fired. You however, wouldn't get fired? However, comma. It, it would, you know. I mean, it's but frowned I, mean, upon. I think we, I, I think I think how we are asking this fired. question. Let's let's be clear. Yeah, are we taking vegetables? as we're asking the question of yep. the panel here? Are we talking about taking our kid to work every goddamn day? <laughs> no. I now I have been real? In the, I have been in the because we're going to ask the question. We're going to ask it the right way. Right. I have been in a position where I've had to take my to children to work with me. However, <laughs> it was a extenuating circumstance, and my job once, once. Once. This is the Once. issue. This is the issue. Okay, 
You don't have anybody to keep your kids. No, we ain't talking you got to go to work. So we talking we about exactly. About we talking about taking the kids Early. to taking work. Taking my kids like every day. I don't every. want we my talking kid. About this. Up, Does your go. kid have a cubby at the job when no. you work at? See this. Is, see, <laughs> Does your this kid is me. get a, a W two? <laughs> this is me. Because his kid this had a me. locker. No. He got a locker. I don't want my kid. I don't want my kid at work with me. Going to work with me. Going to work. Being away from my children. Putting my children in daycare was vacation. I don't going to work vacation. for me was vacation. I don't want to put my kids. In I need to have adult conversation like with food. adult people. Yes, you selfish. Yes. <laughs> did she just? Did she just pull a selfish move? Yes, I yes. did. That's yes. part of being a parent. That's no. Being that's a mama move. Uh-uh. That, was, that, that was selfish <laughs> no, right there. No, no. I want to be able to fix being. my lunch in the microwave or whatever and eat it by myself. You can't do that with your kid with you. Man, no, no. Because your work. kid yes, is your I kid. No like, matter where your kid is, X. your kid ain't going to realize you at work. Exactly. Your kid going to be like, mom, mom, mom. You ain't going to be able to eat your lunch. I want to be able to go to the bathroom by myself. Oh, no. Yeah. They're going to be knocking on the stove. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. Let me get a couple of these comments in before we. Wrap it up. Uh, DJ Renee Melendez is still listening to us. First of all, uh, she says Big Bro Joe is delusional. I agree with her. <laughs> uh, she also said that Adam LaRoche paid for his son to be homeschooled at the practice area. To me, I, 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 that's that may be true, but I, 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 it's privilege, and I just still think that he shouldn't be there. And I think, Renee, based on your comments when you called, you agree he shouldn't be there. Uh, our sister Shana, our clairvoyant medium, hey, she is hey, listening Shana. to us hey, tonight. Uh, she wanted to jump in on the Trump thing that we talked about earlier. She said that Trump is genius. Uh, she said Trump is going to divide the nation. He's already dividing the people now at his rallies. She also says that she's enjoying the Sham Pimple Room. So <laughs> I just wanted to make sure yeah. that we got those comments in. Ain't no has step with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Oh. Legacy Internet Radio. Um, 3375. I just want to say I seen something on, on SY comment um, on, on social media. Um, I long time listener, Michelle K. Yes. Um, her mom is in the hospital, oh, so you know I want um, the family to give Yo, out prayers peace. for her. And shout out to Hakeem. Quick and and I'm glad. With us. I'm glad that uh, you mentioned that because she she did Michelle K. She did hit me up, and she is uh, her comment is here. Uh, she said that hey fam, she hopes everybody is well. Uh, so I I guess there's two comments. So she made that comment, and she also. Said what's up to all of us. So Peace, shout out what's to up? Michelle K and uh, her mom has actually been here in the den with us along with Michelle K when she made a surprise visit to us. So uh, we got a lot of love for that sister. She is one of our longtime original listeners. So I uh, got a lot of love for her and hopefully her mom will get real strong and get at that hospital and get real strong real soon. So Michelle K, if you're listening. Give your mom a big ass Zerbert like they gave on the Cosby For show. All of us. A big ass strawberry yep. from all of us, from our sister Nick, from Big Bro Joe, from Big Sis, Mr. 3375, and yours truly. Give your mom some love. Watch out for Mr. 3375. He drools. He, yes, does, he does drool. Mm. Yes, he does. Ain't yeah. no half step with Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy and the radio. We're going to take our final break of the night. 